just wanted to be a little bit goofy there in the intro. Space is getting crowded, which kind of sounds crazy considering how vast a space is. Three, two, one, zero. Ignition, lift off. But we're talking about that zone of the low Earth orbit, which is where all of these Starlink satellites are currently in orbit. That's about 340 miles away from Earth. Compare that to traditional geostationary satellites around 22,000 miles away. So this low Earth orbit is getting crowded because not only is SpaceX releasing more satellites by the month, you have Project Kuiper by Amazon that is also in the works and will will be taking up part of the sky soon. And then you have China doing their own thing. You have OneWeb. There's a lot of moving parts here. And how do you manage all of that traffic, especially when you consider that NASA has its own precious assets like the International Space Station? Well, according to TechCrunch, that is already being addressed in a new agreement signed between NASA and SpaceX. This agreement allows them to share special info to help avoid Starlink collisions. Starlink has already launched over 1,300 satellites and plans to get all the way up to 42,000 in its constellation. The agreement also outlines the ways which this communication and information will be shared between NASA and SpaceX. So NASA will be providing detailed and accurate info about its planned missions, and they'll give this to SpaceX in advance so that SpaceX can properly program Starlink's automated avoidance measures whenever a mission is happening where NASA assets might cross paths with the constellation. It'll be working directly with SpaceX on improving the ability to assess and avoid any incidents. And so another key part of this agreement is for SpaceX to plan Starlink launches so they're at a minimum either five kilometers above or below the highest and the lowest points of the ISS orbit around the Earth. And SpaceX is also expected to provide updates on its dimming techniques. SpaceX has agreed to work on that employing things like visors and dark sat, which is a less reflective uh, coating of paint. So they are trying to make this situation better. So this is just a summary of the entire agreement, which I've linked in the description, but this is just an example of how NASA and SpaceX are working together. And NASA is putting a lot of faith in SpaceX's autonomous maneuvering capabilities, really banking on the fact that SpaceX will be able to avoid any possible conjunction using this autonomous maneuvering capability. So this agreement is designed to benefit both parties and no money is being exchanged here. It's really just exchanging information. Sir, I'm gonna have to ask you to please move for this demonstration. So let's pretend that this is NASA and this is SpaceX. Well, how this agreement will work is if there is a potential conjunction, NASA has agreed that it won't move. It'll be up to SpaceX to maneuver using autonomous maneuvering capabilities in order to avoid a conjunction. You know, I really thought that this was an exciting update to bring you guys, especially since I recently sat down and had a very long, very thorough, and very fascinating discussion with Jonathan McDowell. He is a Harvard astrophysicist, and I'll have more videos about all of the topics that we talked about coming up. But one of the things that we talked about was, you know, the amount of space junk that there is and the potential for even more, especially with possible collisions. Space is big, right? That's the famous line from Douglas Adams. <laughs> it's mind-bogglingly big. But low Earth orbit, still big, but finite. And it, it's sort of like the ocean. We used to think, oh, throw all the crap you want to the ocean. It'll never fill up, right? Oops, we were wrong. <laughs> and we're starting to find that with space too. And the real problem is that because everything in low Earth orbit is traveling at like 18,000 miles an hour, you know, you need more elbow room. So to take SpaceX's side for a minute, uh, their operational constellation is in a well-defined height range. If everyone's in circular orbits, you can keep out of each other's way, right? right. Um, you, that within that shell, they have you know, a satellite going this way around the Earth, and a satellite going that way around the Earth, and the orbits intersect. And so you've got to space the satellites in the orbit such that they move through each other without hitting each other. And that's not a trivial problem, but it's in theory doable as long as everything goes right.
Right. And, and uh, my worry is that even though the math says that it's okay, what we found historically in space is it's the, what we call the tails of the error distribution, the unlikely failure cases that you get two unlikely failure cases at once. It's not that it can't necessarily be done, but my concern is we're going from in lower Leo, uh, a couple hundred satellites active to a hundred thousand in a short okay. time, right? So, so it's like three orders of magnitude. Yeah. Uh, and I would be much more comfortable from the traffic management point of view if we had gone, okay, let's increase to a thousand, hold that there for a year or five years, see the experience, see the lessons learned, now increase it to 10,000, hold it there for five years, now increase it to 100,000, now that we know that we can handle 10,000, right? right. And, and so I, I feel like the regulators kind of dropped the ball on this in that they're, they're um, you know, just being a little too, oh, the math looks right, let's go for it, uh, <laughs> rather than, yeah, let's maybe go halfway and see how it goes. Yeah. Uh, uh, bec because I think it's the un it's the things you haven't modeled that bite you. If you guys like Starlink and you like getting the latest updates, please click subscribe and put that notification bell on. I'm doing new content every single week. I'm talking to special guests. I'm giving you updates on the world of Starlink and there's so much more to come on this channel. I really appreciate all of your support and I can't wait to see you soon.